All right, so listen, everybody talks about time in the market beats timing the market and just hold through the crash. It always comes back. But I wanted to know how long does it really take, like actual numbers for this? So what I ended up doing was spent the last few weeks analyzing every single major stock market crash since 1926. That's almost 100 years of data, 10 major crashes. And what I found is that the actual recovery times are different than what most people think. Let me show you the data. All right, now listen, if you're new here, I'm Dalton, I'm 29 years old. I'm investing in real estate. I've been investing in the stock market for about a decade now. And look, I'm not gonna lie, market crashes, they kind of terrify me a bit. I work way too hard for my money to watch it just disappear. But here's the thing. I also love the data behind some of this stuff. So instead of just accepting the usual advice of, hey, keep investing, it always bounces back. I wanted to see the actual numbers. How long does it take? What if you bought at the worst possible time? But what if you also kept investing through the crash? Now, by the end of this video, you're gonna know a couple different things here. The exact recovery time for every major crash in the last 100 years. You're gonna learn what happens if you invest at the absolute worst time, like the day before a crash. And whether dollar cost averaging through the crash actually helps or if it's just something people say to make you feel a little bit better. And I'm gonna show you my actual spreadsheet, all my sources and everything, so you can see exactly how I got these numbers and let's just dive right in. All right, listen, now here's exactly how I did the research. I pulled S&P 500 data going all the way back to 1926 from Robert Schiller's database. Now this dude's a Nobel Prize winning economist and his data is publicly available. I'll put the link in the description if you're interested in checking it out for yourself. And then what I did was I identified every time the market dropped by more than 20% from its peak. Why did I do that? Well, it's because that's the technical definition of a bear market. And then I found 10 major crashes from that. The Great Depression, the 37 recession, the 73 oil crisis, Black Monday of 87, the dot-com bubble of 2002, the financial crisis of 08, the COVID crash of 2020, and then there were three smaller ones in the 40s, 60s, and 80s. Now, for each crash, I tracked three things. First, how much did the market actually drop, peak to bottom? Second, if you had money invested before the crash and you just held it, didn't add anything into it, how long did it take till you broke back even? And then third, if you kept investing, I don't know, $1,000 every month through the crash, how long did it take for you to break even off that? And how much better, if better at all, did you do? Let me show you the results. All right, now here's what I found. And some of these numbers really surprised me. Let's first look at the Great Depression. You see, this is the one that everybody points to, right? Well, why? Because it was the worst crash in history. The market dropped 83%. 83%. If you had $10,000 invested, you watched it turn into just $1,700. Absolutely brutal. And if you just held on and didn't add any money, well, it took 15 years to get back to even. 15 years, that's from September 1929 to January 1945. But, and this is really important, if you kept investing $1,000 a month through the entire Great Depression, you broke even in just four years. And by the time the market recovered by 1945, you didn't just break even, you were up 387%. So let me say that again, same crash, same market, but by continuing to invest, you turned the worst crash in history into a 387% gain. Next, let's look at the 2008 financial crisis. This is one that's probably most relevant to us because, well, it's more recent. We saw what it did to our parents' retirement accounts. The market dropped by 57% from October 2007 to March of 2009. Meaning if you had $100,000 invested, you watched it drop down to $43,000. If you just held and didn't do anything at all, it took four years to recover, from March of 2009 to March of 2013. But if you kept investing through, let's just say $500 a month, you broke even in just 18 months. And by the time the market fully recovered, guess what? You were up 48% on your total investment. So let's talk about the COVID crash in 2020. And this one's interesting because it was extremely fast and sharp. The market dropped 34% in one month, February to March of 2020. Fastest crash on record. But it also recovered the fastest. If you just held, you were back to even within five months, August 2020 just insane. However, if you kept investing through it, you broke even in just three months and were up by 15% by the time the market recovered. And then let's talk about the dot-com bubble from 2000 to 2002. This one's important because it shows what happens when you buy at peak hype. 
You see, the market dropped 49% from March 2000 to October 2002, but here's the thing. It took a long seven years to recover if you just held. From March of 2000 to May of 2007. Seven years is definitely a long time to be underwater. And that's what people mean when they talk about the lost decade for stocks. But again, if you kept investing $1,000 per month through the crash, well, you broke even in just two and a half years and you were up by 68% by the time the market fully recovered. Okay, now let's talk about the pattern that I found across all 10 crashes. You see, if you just hold and you don't add any money, well, then the average recovery time to uh, make your money back is 5.2 years. That's the average across all 10 crashes. The shortest was five months in 2020. The longest was 15 years during the Great Depression. But here's the thing, if you just kept investing through the crash, the average time to break even drops significantly to 1.7 years, less than a third of the time. And here's the thing that really stood out to me in every single crash, continuing to invest made a massive difference. Not just a little bit better, we're talking about a lot better. Okay, so look at this chart that I made from the data. The blue bars show recovery time if you just held. The orange bar shows the recovery time if you kept investing. Now, Great Depression, 15 years becomes four years. 2008 crisis, four years becomes one and a half years. The dot-com bubble, seven years becomes two and a half years. Every single time, the orange bar is way shorter than the blue bar. And at the bottom, you can see the averages, 5.2 years versus 1.7 years. The difference ranges from 15% better to 387% better depending on the crash. So I mean, the data here is really clear. If you can afford to keep investing through the crash, it's gonna dramatically improve your outcome. Now, I know what some of you are thinking though, Dalton, that's easy to say, but when the market is crashing and you're watching your account drop every single day, it's really hard to keep buying. And you know what? I, I can't discredit that. I've been fortunate enough to be in such a bullish market for an extremely long time. And the only bear market that I've really seen while I could invest was that COVID crash, which was the quickest in history. But that's the psychological challenge here. And it's exactly why I wanted to see the actual numbers because knowing this data makes it easier to stick to the plan when things get really scary. All right, now listen, let's talk about the worst case scenario because I think this is what most people are genuinely afraid of. Okay, so let's say that you invest $10,000 the day before the biggest crash of the 2008 financial crisis. So it's October 8th, 2007. This is the absolute worst possible timing. You watch your $10,000 drop to just $4,300 by March of 2009. You're down 57%. That's brutal. And you don't add another dollar into this. You just hold on. Now it takes you four years to get back to $10,000 by March of 2013. Four years of zero gains. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. But a lot of people don't really talk about the other flip side to this, okay? If you just hold on for the long term, you still win because that same $10,000 invested in October of 2007 is now worth over 37.7K. That's a 277% return or about 8.1% per year. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you here, that's not like the greatest, most amazing results, but it's also not terrible. You still beat inflation by a lot and you're still building wealth doing that. But let's look at another scenario here. Same timing, you invest $10,000 on October 8th, 2007, the day before the crash. But instead of just holding, you also decide to invest $500 every single month going forward, regardless of what happens in the market. Okay, so by March of 2009, when the market bottoms, you're not down 57% anymore, you're actually down less than 50%. You're at 47%. Why? Well, because you've been investing and buying more shares at lower prices. You break even in about 18 months instead of four years. And today, instead of having 37.7K, you have a whopping $372,000. Now let's just pause and let that sink in because the same starting point, the same crash, the same market, but by continuing to invest $500 a month for 17 years, you invest a total of $112,500, but you have now over $372,000. That's over $260,000 in profit compared to just 27.7 when you buy and hold. See, dollar cost averaging made you 10 times the amount of money, and this is the power of dollar cost averaging through the crash. Okay, so what does this all mean for you and here's my takeaways after doing this research. First, yes, market crashes are scary. And yes, they can take years to recover from if you just hold on to the money and you don't add anything extra to it. 
I mean, the data shows an average 4.2 years. That's real. But even in the worst case scenario, the Great Depression, guess what? You eventually recovered your money if you just held on. So in my mind, it doesn't really make sense to sell and lock in gains. Second, if you can afford to keep investing through the crash, well, the data is overwhelmingly clear that you absolutely should. In every single crash that I personally analyzed, continuing to invest cut the recovery time in half and dramatically improved your long-term returns. And this is why I've set up automatic deposits every two weeks, no matter what the market is doing, because when the crash comes, and it inevitably will at some point, I want to be buying and not panicking. Now, third, the worst time to invest is right before the crash, but even that works out fine if you're investing for the long term. That $10,000 invested the day before the 2008 crash is worth $37,000 today. It's not ideal, but it's also not a disaster. And honestly, you can't predict when market crashes will happen. I can't, you can't, literally nobody can. So trying to time it is just a complete waste of your energy. Fourth, your time horizon is something that matters more than anything else. You see, if you need that money, you're somebody who's close to retirement age in the next two to three years, well, a crash could be absolutely devastating. But if you're somebody like me, well, maybe you're somebody investing for 10, 20, 30 years, I mean, the data shows you're going to be fine. You'll be more than fine. This research made me way more confident in my strategy of just buying solid funds, consistently holding them forever. The math backs up all of this. All right, now let me show you exactly what I'm doing with this information. So right now you're looking at my $80,100 portfolio. I've got this in a Roth IRA and individual investing accounts. Now I've made a pack to myself basically to keep investing no matter what happens. In my Roth IRA, I invest in two different funds. Mainly VTI is one that is going to be, uh, you know, going up with the stock market here. And every single week, or sorry, every single day, I'm investing $14.70. And uh, I just max out my Roth IRA with two different funds doing the same thing. So no matter what happens, the market's up, down, sideways, doesn't matter at all. I'm going to be investing into VTI. Same strategy for SCHD. And then also in my individual account, Every single week, I'm investing $100 into QQQ. You can see the recurring investments that I have up here, $100 every single week. I'm doing the same for uh, Bitcoin because I want to have the upside potential of what Bitcoin has. As I scroll down, you can see another $100 weekly buy. And then there's a couple individual stocks that I really like. But for this strategy, I think targeting funds is far more important, okay? And I mean, yes, it's going to suck in the future because at some point, this portfolio is going to drop 20, maybe 40% or more. And yeah, it's going to be scary, but it's not going to stop these automatic investments that I have. Because if anything, at that point, I'm going to try my best to increase them. Because the data that I just showed, it proves that the winning strategy is just to keep the money rolling. Buy when everyone else is panicking, keep buying when your account is red, and just freaking wait. That's how you turn crashes into opportunities. Look, now I know that this was a lot of numbers and data to sift through, but I think it's important that you actually see this stuff for yourself instead of just taking somebody's word for it. So the next time somebody tells you, hey, don't worry, the market always comes back. Now you know exactly how long it takes. And more importantly, you know what to do about it. Now, I'm gonna put the full spreadsheet with all my data in the description. You can download it, play with the numbers, look around, verify the math, check everything you wanna check out. I want this to be useful, not just interesting information. Now, if this video was helpful, please hit that subscribe button. I make videos like this every week, breaking down investing, personal finance, and building wealth using actual data, not just hype behind it. Now, I've also got a link in the description. You can sign up for my newsletter if you want weekly tips, personal finance stuff related. Uh, it's a great little call to action there. Thanks for checking out this video, guys, and uh, have a great day.